Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta. And that was our Declaration of Principles, which gives you a little idea of who we are and what we are. Such is the nature of life that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. And you are that opportunity and so am I. And so it is. Whoever you are, whatever path brought you here today, we welcome you. Please know that you are welcomed and celebrated. Whatever expression you see yourself in in this life, whatever pronouns you use, whatever expression you are, we welcome you. So we are a strong, open, globally connected community centered on the clarity of principle through teaching, service, and practice. We create a safe and respectful environment that supports healthy spiritual growth. You heard our Declaration of Principles earlier, and I'm going to introduce. So we have spiritually minded people who have demonstrated the ability to use, practice spiritual laws and bring about changes in their life. <clears throat> Licensed by Centers for Spiritual Practice or Spiritual Living, they are able to provide you with spiritual guidance and support in these areas where you're looking for assistance. So you may log in and contact them on our website, cslmidtown.org. And today we've got one of our wonderful practitioners with us sharing good ideas and an affirmative prayer called a spiritual mind treatment. This morning's practitioner is Norma Roberts. Welcome, Norma. Thank you very much, Vance. You know, I just appreciate you so very much. And I just wish to welcome everyone here. A uh, very happy day. I'm hoping that this day is the best day ever. I want to tell you that the theme of us CSL for this month sort of had me perplexed. I just just couldn't understand practicing makes imperfect. All my life, I've been told that practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. You have to practice. And I, I think of going back to the time when my cousin and I were taking piano lessons and um, we had to practice in order to meet with the teacher. When the teacher came, we would go over the lesson. And I would say that she became a piano teacher. She became a music teacher. I never learned the music. The piano was at her home. And of course I had to go to her home in order to practice. And so she had an occasion to practice whenever she wanted to. So she was able to really learn the music. I didn't have the choice. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'll say that. So that's where the practice makes imperfect really sort of hit me. And I was wondering, what does it really mean? And I decided to go to uh, Ernest home and see what he called perfect. And I uh, want to read to you from pages 184 of the Science of Mind textbook, where he says, the truth is indivisible and whole. God is complete and perfect. A perfect cause must produce a perfect effect. Disregarding all evidence to the contrary, the student of truth will maintain that he lives in a perfect universe and among people potentially perfect. He will re uh, regulate his thinking to meet this necessity and will refuse to believe in its opposite. We cannot afford to believe in imperfection for a single second. To do so is to doubt God. It is believe in a power apart from God. It is to believe in another creator. Let us daily say to ourselves, perfect God within me, perfect life within me, which is God, come forth into expression through me as that which I am. Lead me ever into the paths of perfection and cause me to see only the good. 
By this practice, the soul will become illumined and will acquaint itself with God and be at peace. Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. I want you to know what I came to believe is this. We each came into this world with a unique design. We are to do or have a unique experience. We're like no one else. It is getting to love ourselves as we are. To love this God that is within us right now. And as we love ourselves, we attract other people who will also love us. You must start with loving, giving, and great gratitude that you experience this uniqueness that you are. And so now let's just relax as we prepare for the morning uh, treatment. Join me and accept whatever resonates with you as I speak in the first person. But after the treatment, we will have reflection music. Just invite you to sit still and join me in treatment. Close your eyes if you like. But know, there is but one life. That life is God. That life is whole, perfect, and complete. And that life is my life right here and right now. I delight in knowing spirit is and I are one. And I rejoice in the freedom of choice that I am offered and used. As I move through this day with power, pause, and peace, I know this freedom. I accept what is before me to be done in spirit, seeing it as an opportunity provided by the all-loving, ever-present goodness of God. I welcome each moment of my day, knowing I have the freedom cre to create my day exactly as I choose. And today, I choose and celebrate life, love, light, peace, power, beauty and joy. I believe and accept whatever is next for me is perfect uh, occasion to bless my world with the full sharing of my talents, my knowledge and skill. Everything I do today is accomplished with the certainty that spirit within is guiding me to a higher expression of itself. Therefore, this day, I express the freedom to invest in myself as love, growth, joy, harmony, peace, and well-being. For I know the light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, and the presence of God watches over me, and wherever I am. God is. Today and from this moment on, I know that regardless of my outer conditions, regardless of any appearance of lack or limitation in my life, regardless of any need I may perceive, I am made free by truth as I realize whatever I require is already provided by my source. I now claim complete freedom of the past, and I have no fear of the future. I am poised, patient, and positive as divine blessings unfold in my life. I remain open and receptive to my highest good, for I know I am deserving of every good thing. I ask in mind, knowing that as I ask, I will receive. 
Therefore, right here and right now, I welcome perfect health as my physical body, abundant wealth as my expanding finances, joyous, loving, and free personal relationships, and ever-expanding creative self-expression. I declare I am now released from any attachments to outcomes, allowing my day to flow from a place of trust, love, and peace. And I claim my independence to be the true expression of spirit. With deepest gratitude, I accept these spiritual truths and I release my word into the infinite law of mind, knowing it is already so. As together we say, and so it is. Thank you. And it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, Reverend Jeannie Severins. She's a passionate and multifaceted soul embarking on a creative or a captivating journey that embodies love, humor, and authenticity. With unwavering enthusiasm, she has delved into diverse experiences that have shaped her unique path from spiritual life coaching and stand-up comedy, local theater to cake artistry, writing, speaking, and travel, firewalking to skydiving. Reverend Jeannie has embraced life's adventure wholeheartedly. Uh, driven by her unwavering commitment to spiritual growth, Reverend Jeannie holds a master's degree in spiritual studies and serves in as an educator at the Emerson Theological Institute. And as the co-founder of Begin Within Ministries, Reverend Jeannie and Reverend Michelle E. Zhu Gu are a dynamic, fun, and in interactive duo engaging in open and honest dialogue. Uh, so Reverend Jeannie co collaborates with Michelle to inspire others towards deeper connection to the spirit. Together, they create a space where individuals can explore their spirituality and cultivate a life they genuinely love. With that, I give you Reverend Jeannie Severance. Thanks. Hi. Wow. Thank you. I, I love my introduction because, well, I wrote it. So amazingness. Good morning, people. I'm grateful to be here with you today and um, bring you my flavor of imperfection and being unapologetically myself. So, you know, as uh, Norma spoke about, we believe in whole, perfect, and complete in truth with the capital T. However, in form, sometimes it doesn't always look perfect. We worry about how others perceive us. We look for that external validation and their thoughts, other people's thoughts, actions, opinions, sometimes shape how we look at ourselves. So the true freedom that we find and the true spiritual growth comes from releasing the need for approval and embracing our authentic selves, freeing us from the judgment of others. So one of the lessons I've learned on my spiritual path is recognizing everyone is on their own journey. They don't necessarily have the same path I do. And with that, what they think of me is frankly, none of my business. Their beliefs, their experiences, their limitations are theirs, just as mine are mine and yours belong to you. It does not reflect our true worth. When we let go of that need of the external validation, we do free ourselves from the burden of judgment, our own and others. And we can open ourselves up for a deeper understanding of who we are. I know for me, the fear of judgment and external validation has prevented me from embracing a life I love. And even Sometimes my spiritual is when I was first beginning as a spiritual life coach, practitioner, I was worried if I was doing prayer right, 
when I would pray out loud, did I get all the steps in the right order? Was it big enough? Did I use the right words? And that concern for that validation kept me from my divine connection and true spiritual fulfillment. Once I let go of that, then my prayers became authentic, unapologetically authentically me. I know it would be hard to tell, but I don't follow all the rules in life. However, I really do enjoy my spiritual connection, my connection with others, nature, the divine as one. So venturing outside of that comfort zone transforms these experiences into personal growth and self-realization paths. And we get to unveil our true authentic self to the world around us. Stepping into what I would call some unfamiliar territory can ignite flame with curiosity, propelling us to embrace new experiences and perspectives shed layers of self-imposed limitation, right? Because we are our biggest judges with courageous steps revealing our greatness. As Ernest Holmes, founder of Science of Mind, says in, in Know Yourself, the spiritual universe then is not something to be attained or gained. As though we went from where it is not to where it is, but as something to which we must wake up, something we must become conscious of, something we must sense as being immediate. It is present with us and in us right now. That concept of the now moment is How my ministry began, beginning within, is all about embracing this spiritual universe and opening ourselves up to the possibility of learning and breakthroughs. In this, we become receptive to fresh ideas, maybe even alternative viewpoints. I know, it's scary. Sometimes that brings innovative solutions, this newfound openness allows us to challenge our assumptions, think critically, and explore uncharted territories. Does that sound like fun? Are you ready? Are you ready to become more adaptable and resilient and capable of navigating some of life's twists and turns with a little bit more grace and agility? A growth mindset transforms us into lifelong learners Seeking to expand. Again, Ernest Holmes tells us, it seems as though behind, and this is my add on, human versus man's, human spiritual growth, there is an irresistible pressure compelling more, better, higher, greater things. And it will all be in accordance with the natural law in the spiritual world. As a human, so shall be evolution and evolution, the thought and the thing, the word and the manifestation, the purpose and the execution. This is the sequence of cause and effect. And the way the law works, insofar as any individual understands this, the law of mind, he is able to use it. We must learn how it works and comply with the way it works. Always. It is an obedient servant. So stepping out of that comfort zone when I first came to Science of Mind really changed my spiritual possibility. I became more attuned to beauty and interconnectedness of life and the sense of all and gratitude. Because this was a new way of thinking for me, not an external God away from me, but an internal God, an internal God in me and in you and in all. This 
created some more profound experience and moments of connection and transcended some of the limitations of my everyday existence. Recently, I was able to enjoy another experience of that when I visited Southern Utah. I was in a a dark sky area, meaning that there were no city lights. We were in the middle of nowhere out in Burl, Utah. And spending the night uh, in this dome-shaped clear room, and um, it was an amazing experience. And there was a deck outside. And as I laid on this deck, each way I turned, whether it was left, right, up, down, Since there were no mountains or anything, and we were just on flat land, everywhere I looked in the sky, there was stars in the Milky Way. It was unfathomable, the vastness of it. And I felt the borders of my being just being dissolved as if I were part of that universe with no separation. And ultimately, we are. Venturing outside comfort zones transforms at the core. That's where the authenticity, resilience, open-mindedness, and becoming more spiritually aware starts to develop. We get this deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. While leading a life with meaning and purpose and fulfillment can change us. We feel the divine and we're open at the top to remind ourselves who and whose we are. Rumi states, out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. This is that quantum field that everyone gets to be in authentically. This authenticity, this imperfection of who we are and whose we are is valuable learning experience, not just for ourselves, but to have the compassion for others who may not live up to our expectations. It is a journey of self-discovery and self-acceptance. It requires us to be vulnerable and unapologetically honest with ourselves as we navigate some uncharted waters of authenticity. We discover new depths and within ourselves a deeper connection to the true essence, our true divineness, that whole, perfect, and complete soul who is and always has been divine. I know that this world sometimes pressures us to conform and embracing our true selves can be a true act of bravery as well as liberation. Shedding some of the societal labels that don't resonate with our inner essence is the first step toward authenticity. These labels such as successful or beautiful as defined by society's standards, are often rooted in stereotypes and prejudices, limiting us and stifling growth. Letting go of this is crucial. And it reminds us that the most important thing is our divine essence, not limited by other people's perspectives or experiences. When we give them too much power, we allow them to define who we are. So let's practice some self-reflection and set some boundaries and surround ourselves with those supporting individuals. If you are here now, you probably have that tribe already. Those people that give you that encouragement, that love, that ability to be more of who you are. Authenticity is not about being perfect or flawless. Definitely not. It's about accepting your strengths and weaknesses. 
your quirks, your eccentricities. It's about living in alignment with your values and your beliefs, even if they're different from those around you. Authenticity requires courage and self-acceptance, and it means being willing to be vulnerable and show the world who you are. Yes, indeed, a very brave act that brings empowerment. It's taught me and brought me immense rewards. I experience a profound sense of peace and contentment. And I feel more connected to myself and others. I attract people who resonate with my energy, right? Because we're not for everybody. And that's okay. The people that are for me appreciate me for who I am. My relationships are built on trust and honesty and mutual respect. These are the rewards of being authentically me, and they inspire me to continue on my path. Speaking of being beautiful, be you to be full, authenticity is a way to lead to greater joy and fulfillment. Have more energy, more of the things you love, pursue more passions explore creativity, and have a positive impact on the world around you. Authenticity is our birthright. You were born to be you, not anybody else. You are divine and beautiful just as you are. So don't be a copy of someone else. The key to this fulfilling life is to embrace your true self. Shed what society says you should be, and let your light, your beautiful, bright, brilliant light shine. The world needs your unique gifts or you wouldn't be here. So he said, that sounds great, Reverend Jeannie. How do I do it? How do we get there? Well, there's a few practices, tried and true methods by yours truly to see how we can get more authentic, more beautiful every day. One, cultivate self-awareness. You can't go where you don't know. You have to look at yourself. You have to dive deep into this transformative journey that will empower you to be a better individual and better understand your thoughts and emotions and behaviors. Central to this process is paying close attention to your inner world. What happens in your mind, in your heart, these feelings, these sensations, right? Without judgment or criticism. Mindfulness practices like meditation and cultivating some different ways of staying present in the now moment. One of my favorites is looking where my feet are. I love to see where my feet are when they're on sand at a beach or grass, a beautiful place. But sometimes it's just in my home office so that I know where I'm at and what I'm doing. This allows us to observe our mental and emotional landscape when we're being mindful of where we are. When we engage in this self-awareness, you can recognize some patterns to your thought processes and behaviors. You may notice that you're seeking external validation from others to boost self-worth. This realization empowers you to take control of those thoughts. And instead of relying on that, shift your perspective. See where you, as the divine self, can validate yourself. You learn to accept and appreciate yourself for who you are, regardless of any expectations. This enables you to make conscious choices aligned with your values and aspirations. Two, challenge your beliefs. Reflecting on your beliefs about others' perceptions of you is essential to cultivating healthy relationships and personal well-being. Often our beliefs 
about what others think are shaped by assumptions rather than concrete evidence. So let's question the basis of where these beliefs came from and gain clarity to avoid unnecessary distress. Consider a situation where you believe someone thinks negatively of you, such as you're not good enough, you're not educated enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not enough somewhere. Rather than immediately assuming this is true, that that's what they're thinking, ask yourself, do you have tangible proof? Can you support that idea? Are there specific actions or words from this individual that indicate their negative perception? Or are these your insecurities and self-doubt influencing your interpretation of their behavior? It's important to recognize that our perception of others' thoughts and feelings is often subjective and influenced by our own experiences and biases and emotional state. When we make these assumptions about what others are thinking without concrete evidence, we run the risk of unnecessary conflict and perpetuating negative self-perception, engaging in self-reflection and mindfulness practices can help us gain a more precise understanding of ourselves. When you think someone thinks something negative of you, pay attention to your thoughts and feelings. Are you basing this on past experiences or present circumstances? Or are you prone to self-criticism? Consider seeking some feedback from your minister, from a practitioner, from a therapist, from your best friend. Check in, see if what it is you're thinking and being with is actually true. Remember, it's not possible to know exactly what other people are thinking. However, by reflecting on your own beliefs and seeking an alternative perspective, you can cultivate a more balanced and compassionate understanding of yourself and your relationships. And that leads to the third one. Practice self-compassion. Ah, amidst the turbulence of this life where self-doubt and criticism can cloud our minds, it's imperative to extend the same kindness and gentleness we give to others to embrace ourselves. Embrace these imperfections acknowledge our strengths and remind ourselves of our worthiness, regardless of the opinions and judgments of others. Your value remains unwavering. So be gentle with that heart as it carries the weight of your emotions and experiences. Handle it with care for it deserves love and compassion. Remember, you are worthy of love. You are worthy of acceptance, not because of any achievement or external validation, but simply because you exist. Your existence is proof of the beauty and the complexity of life. So embrace this self-journey is self-acceptance. And know you are worthy of all the world's love and happiness. And last but not least, number four, focus on your growth. Instead of worrying about what others think, focus on your personal spiritual development. This powerful mind shift can lead to a more fulfilling and meaningful life. You will also develop a deeper connection to your inner self and the divine. Focusing on your personal and spiritual development does not mean you should ignore your responsibilities or neglect your relationships. However, it does mean that you should prioritize your well-being and happiness. When you're taking care of yourself, you are better able to care for others. You are also more likely to attract positive people and experiences into your life. When you focus on your personal and spiritual development, 
You invest in a future. You create a foundation for a happy, healthy, and fulfilling life. So let go of your worries and what others think and embrace your self journey and your growth. I have a little poem for you now to uh, kind of seal this on our journey. I took care of myself and it wasn't beautiful. I took care of myself and I looked at the overdue bills in the face and even thought it hurt. I took care of myself and I cried ugly through the therapy session and made another appointment for next week. I put in the work and wrote all the bad memories in detail. I apologized to all the friends I didn't have the energy to talk to. I finally cut off the dead ends of my hair and brought bought produce and slimly avoided sustaining myself on barbecue chips and poetry. I recycled. I set an alarm for eight hours of sleep and did not sleep more or less. I took care of myself and it wasn't bubble baths. It wasn't lotion at Bath and Body Works and three cheese pizza. It was uncomfortable. It wasn't beautiful, but I am. And it didn't have to be beautiful to be worth it. This is by Schuler Peck. The greatest act of self-love isn't always. So I am so grateful to have been here to celebrate this time with all of you this Sunday. Know that you are beautiful. You are worthy. You are divine. And if you ever forget that, remember. Reverend Jeannie loves you. Mwah! Have a great day, beloveds. Thank you, Reverend Jeannie. What an awesome, inspiring talk this morning. So with that, we now move into our time for conscious giving, prosperity. You can donate to us at cslmidtown.org slash donate, which is on here, or you can scan the QR code. It'll take you right to the site to do a one-time donation or set up an ongoing donation if you're here all the time and you want to do that. So if you would now say with me our affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow. And all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And now, so um next week we'll be back here online um and right after this if you want to join reverend genie over on our zoom channel go to cslmidtown.org slash donate and um or not cslmidtown.org scroll down go to the zoom link and that will take you there there's a little code if you haven't been in already and you need that to get into the zoom room but that will get you there um yeah our announcements for next week we've got um reverend alma stevens from the hollywood church uh spiritual living and um now we'll say our declaration of principles our affirmation of life rather sorry about that I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week.